In this video we're going to look at alternative jQuery methods for making AJAX calls. So here's our page that we're going to be loading stuff into. It starts off with just this heading and in the section down here we're going to display some information just like we did in the last AJAX video. Alright, this is the HTML for that page. Here's the output div where we're going to write the content. And in our JavaScript file we have the same JavaScript that we were using in the original Ajax jQuery video. There's the init function that runs when the page loads. There is the global data variable from up top here, which we're checking to see if it's null. If it is null, that means we haven't made an Ajax call yet, so we can go ahead and do that. After the call comes back, we're going to call this good XML function, where we put the data into that data variable. At that point, data is no longer null, and we won't make the call again and again and again. All right, so we're going to be displaying the number of red and the number of blue items from inside of that data. Here's the original call that we made using the AJAX method. We called this page sample data onexml We used the post method, and we told it that it was going to be an XML file that was coming back. Then we're looking at the good and the bad function. The done method calls good XML, the fail method calls fail XML. Done means you've got the file back. You have it in its entirety, there's no problems with it. Fail means there was some issue. Could have been a 404 error, could have been a problem parsing the file. Whatever it is, there was a problem. Okay, so the first alternative method to this is get. It takes one required parameter, and that is the URL for the file that you want to fetch. So I could just leave it at that. I could say get sample data one XML. That's going to work. It's going to go. It's going to fetch the file, bring it back. But it doesn't do anything else. We want to be able to do something with it when the data comes back. So there's another optional parameter that we can add into here, and that is the name of the function to call when things work out. Good XML. So, same as we did before, we're going to call this function if we successfully fetch the file. Now, it's also good practice to always throw in the fail method. You want to be able to handle it if there was a problem getting the data as well. So, fail XML, that was the name of that function. Alright, so I'll save this, jump back over to our browser, I reload the page. There it is. There's the response coming back from the server. We're adding up the red and the blue items. Great, so that works. Another alternative method, very similar to this one, almost the exact same except post. That is the name of the method. The difference between these get and post methods in the AJAX one is with the AJAX you can configure all the properties. With get and post, there's a bunch of things that are preset for you. Get uses the get type, post uses the post type. Based on this, being an XML file, it's going to default and say that it's fetching XML. All right, so I'm going to comment out both of these just momentarily, jump back to the browser, refresh this just to clear it out so the result is gone. And if I come back here now and enable the post call, when I run it this time, there we go, writes out the result. So whether it's AJAX, GET, or POST, all three of them do the same sort of thing. They're all making an AJAX call to the server to fetch this data. And if it works, it calls good XML. If it fails, it calls the fail method.